Welcome to the first video tutorial for programming in the Phi Parallel Programming Language. It is traditional for someone new to the C programming language to start with the trivial program known as the Hello World program. Even this simple program introduces you to quite a few concepts. All this program does is to print the words Hello World in your console window. As simple as this may seem, there are quite a few things to talk about. In the window on the left, I have the program in C open with my trusty OpenWatcom text editor. On the right, I have the equivalent program written in Phi open with my Phi Edit text editor. Before we get started, let me first say that C and Phi are compatible at the object module level. You can compile source modules written separately in C and Phi and then link them together and run them as one program. In contrast, C and C++ are not compatible at the object module level, but C is upward compatible with C++ at the source code level. You must recompile C source code in order to get it to link with C++ modules. Back to our example, first notice that the text in the C version of the program is shown in black and blue. This is not because the file actually contains black and blue characters. The ASCII text in the C source file actually contains no visual properties such as color, style, or size. It is the editor that understands programs written in C, and it makes text look different depending on what it means in C. This feature is called syntax highlighting. In general, the OpenWatcom editor colors text in blue if the compiler does not try to interpret what the text means. In this case, it is the comment on top and the text stream below that are colored in blue. The rest of the text is colored in black because it is C syntax. Now the colors in the Phi Edit window to the right are not due to syntax highlighting. These colors are there because I put them there myself. In effect, the text editor on the right is a dumb text editor when it comes to understanding the language of the text but it uses a smarter text encoding method that can store a lot more visual information that you can put into your source code. On the first line in the C version to our left, these first two slash characters are comment characters. They tell the compiler to ignore what is on the rest of the line. In this case, it is the words example in C. Looking at the file on the right, if you are a veteran C programmer, you will have immediately noticed that several of the characters in this file are not ASCII. This note character, which I have shown in red, is one of several comment characters that is equivalent to the two slash characters used in C. It is for putting notes, pun intended, into your source code. All text is ignored to the end of the line after the compiler encounters this character. In this case, it is the text example in Phi. In both programs, the main thing you should notice is the function called main, here and here. When a program is linked together, the main function is the entry point into your program. This means that it is where your program starts to execute. The parentheses to the right of the word main tells the compiler that this is a function definition. What lies between these parentheses are the parameters that are passed to the function. In this case, there are no parameters as indicated in the C program with the keyword void, nor in the Phi program as indicated by the absence of any parameters. What immediately precedes a function name declares the type of the value that is returned to its caller. 
but we see nothing preceding the main function to declare a return type in our C program. This does not mean that the function doesn't return anything. In C, if there is no return type specified for a function, a return value of type int is assumed. If I type it in explicitly, it will not change the meaning of the program and will make its meaning more clear to anyone reading my source code. In C, the keyword int is a signed integer that has a bit width that is native to the computer that the program will run on. So on a computer running MS-DOS, it is 16 bits wide. In a native Windows NT program running on a Pentium, it is 32 bits wide. And on a Windows 7 program running in 64-bit mode, it is 64 bits wide. Looking at the 5 version of the Hello World program, we see that main returns a value of type SW, which stands for signed word. I have a suggestion for you. Life will go much easier for you in the Phi programming world if you will think of signed as a noun and word as an adjective describing the size of signed. Here, signed implies integer. Think about that one for a moment. In Phi, the return type of a function must be declared even if the function returns nothing. This is consistent with the rule that all declarations in Phi must have a colon to separate a declared item from its root type. The term word is an industry standard term for the width of a general purpose data register in a given computer architecture. With many processor architectures though, the term word has come just to mean 16 bits, but this is a corruption of its original meaning just as the type int in C sharp has come to mean a 32-bit integer. Even though the original x86 word size was 16 bits wide, the term word became ingrained and it still means 16 bits to many people in the AMD64 architecture, even though when using the generic term, the AMD64 architecture's word size is actually 64 bits wide when running in 64-bit mode. Moving on in the C program, these curly braces below the main function on the left enclose all of the program statements that are nested within function main. Notice that the curly braces in the Phi program on the right are not the familiar curly braces that C programmers are used to. These two-pointed curly braces or program braces in your Phi programs will remind you that you are programming with a parallel programming language. These two points, here and here, should make you think plural, as in twin engines, because you are going to have more power in your programs. Now for the function printf. This function is part of the standard C library. The linker will include this in your executable before you run it. Here is where it can get a little confusing. The message hello world is an argument to function printf and is enclosed within double quotes. In C, the value as you see it here is either an array of text characters or a stream depending on how it is used. The terminology in the C world does not help much to understand what is going on here. This is why in Phi we say strings and arrays of text characters are very different things. These two programs accomplish pretty much the same thing, but what is actually happening in the C example will be more easily understood if we now talk about the Phi example. In Phi, these double quote characters turn the series of characters between them into a text array. In Phi, these text characters between the double quotes are all 32 bits in size. 
but this C library printf function needs as an argument the address of only the first character of a string. And since characters in C are only 8 bits in size, printf needs to be passed a pointer to a byte or care as the C language calls them. So what does the little left-facing triangle do in the Phi version of our program? It is the UTF-8 encoding operator which takes the array of text characters to its right and converts it into a byte stream and the compiler adds a zero character at the end to terminate the byte stream. This encoded byte stream that was generated from text is what is known as a string in Phi. The advantages of strings over arrays in Phi are that their correct interpretation is not in the independent and they usually save some storage space when most of the text in them is ASCII. The value that the UTF-8 encoding operator returns is a pointer to the first byte of the stream, which is compatible with the C library's printf function. A caveat for calling printf from software written in Phi is that you must put only ASCII characters in your text streams. Otherwise, printf will not know what to do with the non-ASCII characters present in a UTF-8 sequence of bytes, and you will probably get some unexpected behavior. Beyond that, you should be pretty safe. That's about it for the Hello World tutorial. Thanks for watching.